you guys. So we just did the mitosis and meiosis prompt, and now we're going to look at food chains and food webs um, because the second topic is the interdependence of organisms on their environment. So essentially how organisms interact with their environment. So let's go ahead and um, read the prompt. You should have it in front of you, and you can uh, just pause the video for a moment to uh, read it through. Okay, now that you've read it, let's go ahead and underline keywords. So one thing, we have food chains and we have food webs. Okay, and remember, you can ask for a highlighter on the gateway. So if you like highlighting rather than underlining or circling, um, that is an option you can have. Okay, so we have organisms of different species can interact in many ways within an ecosystem. A food chain, so that's an important word, is a series of organisms that eat one another so that energy and nutrients flow from one to the next. A food web consists of many intersecting food chains and represents the different things an organism can eat and be eaten by. Discuss how energy is transferred. We'll talk about the energy is transferred through the trophic levels of a food chain or a food web. In your essay, be sure to complete the following tasks. Identify the primary source of energy for the food web in document A. Describe a single food chain that exists in the food web and discuss the trophic roles of each organism you use in your food chain. Draw and discuss a pyramid of energy for the food chain you described and explain how much energy is transferred. So how that how much is actually also important in your pyramid from one trophic level to the next. Describe the relationship that exists between the caterpillar and the ground beetle. So I'm not going to underline that, but I or highlight it, but I am going to underline it um, because they specific that's something specific that they want to know. So that seems important. Um, in document A, and predict the effect to the ecosystem. So the effect of the ecosystem if the ground beetle were suddenly removed. Explain what would happen to the organisms in this ecosystem if there is a long-term drought and the trees could not survive. Okay, so we have this, these underlined words. I want to make sure that we can actually discuss what they mean. So they give us the definition of food chains and food webs um, in this scientific background, which remember is also our scenario. So food chains is a pathway of energy, right? And food webs are all are all possible food chains connected. And these are all for an ecosystem. And an ecosystem is an area that shares a climate. Um, and it includes the abiotic and biotic factors. Um, so a species is animals of, well, animals that are the same. They can reproduce. Animals that can reproduce together. Okay. Um, and we've already talked about food web, food chains. So how energy is transferred through trophic levels. So with trophic levels, you have producers. You have primary consumers. 
secondary consumers. And you can have decomposers. And you can have tertiary and then quaternary consumers. I just am not going to write all of those out. Um, so pyramid of energy. Um, pyramid of energy is going to kind of look like this, right? And you're going to have producers on the bottom. And you're going to have um, consumers at the top. So it goes in order from bottom to top. And when they talk about how much energy is transferred, that's the 10% rule. Okay, so if we look at the energy of an organism, okay, so let's say you have all of this energy, that's 100%, right? Well, 10% of it goes to the animal who eats it. And 90% of it gets used up, released as heat, or, you know, other things. But only the animal who eats it only gets 10% of its actual stored energy that's in there. Um, and so it continues to go down. Um, and so describe the relationship that exists between caterpillar and ground beetle. So when we're talking about these kind of relationships, um, there's all kinds of relationships. So you could have a symbiotic relationship. You could have a predator-prey relationship. Um, it just depends on what our food web and food chain in document A is going to tell us. Um, and then what would happen to the organisms if there's a long-term drought? Remember that a drought is a long period of time with no rain. And so if the trees are not surviving, um, we will have to look at those. Keep in mind that trees are plants, and so that means they are producers. They uh, use photosynthesis to uh, turn energy into food sources. So let's go ahead and look at the documents. So when we're looking at document A, the first thing that we want to notice is there's oh, all these arrows, right? And so we want to um, start our documents with IC statements. Um, because this is what is going to provide our evidence. So I see arrows pointing from one organism to another. I see the sun at the bottom. I see plants connected to the sun by arrows. I'm just going to give these bullet points. I see animals connected to only plants. Okay. Now, in terms about what I see, there are also things I know, right? So, or I think. I think statements help us provide reasoning for our evidence. So, I think this is a food web. I think there are many food chains. I think this represents, or excuse me, um, not this represents, but um, 
the arrows represent energy. Represent energy. I think that uh, the arrows point towards who is eating. For example, I know that in my prompt they talked about the ground beetle and the caterpillar, and so I think the ground beetle is the predator and the caterpillar is the prey. And so with all of this I can also make um, connections. So the sun is the source of energy. I think um, that the plants are producers because they use photosynthesis to produce their own um, energy. I think that the caterpillar and the grasshopper are primary consumers. I think that the ground beetle and the American robin, well, the ground beetle for sure, is a secondary consumer. Gets a little tricky uh, with these upper ones because the American robin would be considered a secondary consumer because it eats the caterpillar, it eats the leaves, but it could also be considered a tertiary consumer because it eats the ground beetle, which eats the caterpillar, which eats the leaves. But it could also be considered a primary consumer because it eats the berries. There's that arrow pointing there. So it's a little tricky once you get higher up. It depends on what food chain you're following. Um, but I can see that a, a lot of these things are pointing to the burying beetle. And the burying beetle is not going to like jump out of the sky and eat the hawk. So the priory died. So the burying beetle is most likely a decomposer. Maybe that's why it's called burying, right? Because decompose, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and so I also know that um, that plants are also called um, autotrophs. And I know that animals are connected only to plants. Those are called herbivores. And something that eats both uh, plants and animals, like the American robin, would be an omnivore. And something that only eats animals, like the hawk, would be a carnivore. So you can see that with document A, I have listed just all of this information and, and sentences and statements that I was able to pull from here. So um, one way that I could use this in a body paragraph is I could, um, I could say in document A, there are arrows that represent energy pointing from one organism to another in an example uh, as an example of a food web. Um, so we use our I see statements as our evidence and our I think statements, what we know about it, to provide reasoning and connection between what we see and why that might be important. So let's take a look at uh, document B. So document B um, is an example of a uh, food web, and since we've already practiced the I see, I think, just for the sake of time, I'm going to just move a little fast. Um, so as a source of energy, um, we have the sun, a level one organism that's connected directly there would be a producer or autotroph, an autotroph. And so an example of these from the previous one would be the berries or the, um, I think there is grass on there. Uh, level two organism, this would be a primary consumer. 
and some examples, something that ate the berries, uh, or let's, let's just go with the leaves in my example, because that's why I can remember the primary consumer would be the caterpillar. A level three organism uh, would be a secondary consumer. And an example of that would be the ground beetle. And a level four organism would be a tertiary consumer. And an example of that would be the American robin in this particular example. Okay, um, so one thing you want to make sure is I believe in the prompt, they ask you to give an example of a certain number of um, certain number of food chains, and so you'd want to do that. And one of the greatest things about the gateway is if, let's say I list out an example and I label the leaves as a, um, or I kind of maybe get it out of order or something like that. If you can list multiple food chains or maybe at least one more than they ask you to, then you're kind of covering your bases to make sure that you have enough that are correct. Um, so let's look at document C. So document C um, shows the relationship between predators and prey. And remember, we've already talked about how the caterpillar is the prey and the ground beetle is the predator, which I think is a little weird for us to think about because normally we're used to predator prey examples being like the wolf and deer or antelopes and lions or, you know, something kind of large, but it's um, good to remember that predators and prey can be very small too. And so what we see in document C is we see a graph, right? So I see a graph uh, that shows the number of prey and predator over time, right? Um, and so we can use that just to make a really great sentence. So in document C, I see a graph that shows the number of predators and prey over time. I see that as the prey, when the prey is like really high, um, it starts to decrease as the predator goes up. So I see that um, predators start to go up and prey will start to go down. And we notice it's it's happening over and over again, right? Um, and so this is a cycle. Um, and I spelled cycle wrong, forgot that second C. Um, so predators and prey, you can see they have an inverse relationship um, because if one is really high, the other one is gonna start to grow and um, well, reverse the process. And notice that the prey always has a higher number, right? These red ones are always like really high, um, even but they don't go lower than the predators. And that's because in order to have predators, you have to have at least that same number of prey, if not um, more in a good season um, in order for that to occur. So hopefully, um, you're feeling okay about food chains and food webs. Um, now that we've looked at those, uh, so the primary source of energy, right, for the food web would be the sun. Uh, describe a single food chain. Okay, we talked about that one. We picked one, but maybe writing two would be really good. Make sure you remember that the word describe means give details, okay? Use your vocabulary words and talk about you have to discuss the trophic roles. So what does that mean? Who's eating who? Um, draw and discuss a pyramid of energy for the food web, okay? Or for the food chain, one thing to note is um, this food chain that we talked about, we would wanna turn this into a pyramid of energy. So if we just kinda draw it here, um, we would have our uh, leaves on the bottom. And then we would have our caterpillar and then we would have our ground beetle and we would have our American robin at the top and one reason why we have less of these at the top is you need more um, 
of the organism that comes before it on the chain in order to support what's above it because we have the 10% rule. Um, and so if the leaves have, let's say, 100,000 joules of energy stored in them, okay, um, only 10% of them uh, will the caterpillar get. So the caterpillar will only get 10,000 joules of energy uh, that's available of the um, 100,000. And then that means the ground beetle would only get 1,000 and the American robin would only get 100 joules. And so when you see that, you're realizing that anytime they eat and anytime they're trying to convert um, what they eat into usable energy, they're only getting about 10% or one-tenth of what is possible, which is not really a very efficient reaction if you think about it. Um, and then we also have um, how the caterpillar and the ground beetle are predator and prey relationships, right? Because it points from the prey to the predator. So it, the arrow in the food web uh, points from the caterpillar to the ground beetle. And so that's important. Um, and then what would happen if the trees could not survive? Well, we can point to the fact that everything in the food web is based on something that depends on trees. So without trees, everything would fall apart. The whole ecosystem would not survive if there could be no more trees. But if you consider trees as only providing the leaves in the food chain and not the berries and maybe other sources, then it might survive. But for the most part, it'd be bye-bye ecosystem. So good luck if you have this topic.